hello everyone welcome back in this video we'll continue with the task 3 for the hands-on lab 3 so in this task uh, we will review the amazon rds db instance metadata via the console so uh, we will navigate through the rds uh, console to ensure the instance that we have created in task 1 with to make sure if that is completed and uh, active and then explore the aws management console you know to learn how to find the connection information for the db uh, instance so the connection information for the db instance uh, includes its endpoint port and a valid database user so here uh, from the uh, aws management console you can uh, you know type uh, rds from the search bar okay and click on databases okay so from the list of uh, db identifier uh, you can you know see this um, like aurora you can see the status available okay and here you can you know select this aurora okay here uh, we are under connectivity and security tab here we can find the endpoint and uh, the port number for the database cluster okay so this is the endpoint and the respective port number for the database cluster so generally we need the endpoint and the port number to connect to the database so we need these two uh, endpoints and the port number to connect to the database so we can you know copy paste uh, this endpoint and uh, then we will use it okay so you can copy this using this uh, you know uh, copy icon for the endpoint name and uh, you can also see the status uh, it shows available and on the uh, configuration tab we can find uh, the details how the database is currently configured and uh, under the uh, monitoring uh, you know we can monitor the metrics for the uh, you know for the following items like uh, we can see the uh, number of connections to a database instance and the amount of read write operations to the database instance and uh, the amount of uh, storage that a database you know currently using and the amount of uh, cpu utilization and the amount of network traffic to and from the database instance So next in task four, we'll test the application connectivity to the database. And so here uh, we can identify the uh, application load balancer URL and uh, run a simple HTTP request through the load balancer. And then we'll launch the web application, which is installed on the EC2 instance. And then we'll test the application connectivity to the database so from this uh, search bar you can type uh, ec2 and here you can go to the target groups okay and select the alb target group Okay, we can see that uh, this is healthy. Okay, and uh, we can choose the load balances. And you can see it is already selected.
okay so we can see the uh description and does you know state active so here uh we can see the you know so we can see those information here you know you know that uh, there is a dns name so let's you know copy this dns name and uh, let's open it in the new browser okay so uh, we are getting a web page like this the web page uh, this page was generated by this instance in this availability zone so as you know we have selected two availability zone and this is coming from 2b availability zone and here you can click on the setting So in this endpoint, we can you know paste uh, the writer instance endpoint that we copied earlier. Okay, and uh, the database which is our uh, inventory and the username db admin and password admin one two three and click on save okay so there was a space in the um, url so i just removed it and uh, now we can see that uh, this application connect to the database and uh, load some initial data and displays that information so with this application we can add edit or delete an item from a store inventory so the inventory information is stored uh, in the amazon rds uh, mysql compatible database we created earlier in the lab that means uh, uh, like if the uh, web application server fail the data will not be lost and uh, it also means that uh, multiple application server could access the same data. So here we have successfully, you know, access to the web application that we have installed on the Amazon EC2 instance through the load balancer. Okay, so that's it uh, in this video and I'll see in the next. Thank you.